Welcome to Take It From The Iron Woman. My name is Susanne Müller, your host and the Iron Woman. This podcast is about empowering yourself and others to make real changes in the world. You will hear from everyday, smart, sophisticated, hip people like you and me. Not everybody has to be an Iron Woman to impress the world. Together, we will learn from the sports and business leaders how you can become a more successful person as an entrepreneur or a leader. It's one step at a time, one day at a time. Take your steps now. Take your big steps now. Join me on this journey to success. Take it from the Ein Woman. We only have special guests. And today we go to Brussels to Sarah. And I think, Sarah, you have to introduce yourself because there's so much. Tell us more about you. Hi, Susan. Hello, everybody. Thanks for inviting me. Thanks for sh letting me the opportunity to share my my experience. I think there is a lot to say about myself. First of all, I'm a French Caribbean. I grew up in the Guadeloupe. I arrived in France when I was 17, just after I passed my, uh, I finished high school. And uh, I'm a biologist by training. I was a researcher for years, working. I finished my career at Harvard Medical School in Boston. And then I moved back to Europe to become a regulatory affairs. I've been regulatory affairs for 10 years. For people who don't know what is a regulatory affair, yeah. is a person to... <laughs> <laughs> this is a difficult word. I don't know anything about this. So please let us know so that layman can understand. It, 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 yeah. It's a person who take care of the regulation which apply to a product before you put it on them. Mm -hmm. For pharmaceutical, it's more known because uh, you have to review all the documents to place mm -hmm. the medicine on the market. But I studied that. Very quickly, I decided to move away from pharmaceutical and my specialty is packaging. And more broadly, I'm working with biopesticides. I'm also working with feeds for animal nutrition. I'm also doing some regulation for medical devices. I study a different broad of a product, but nothing related with pharmaceutical. But I always like to know what you do when you don't work. I think that somewhat gives us a more colorful picture of you. First of all, I study Aikido for when I was a kid and I stopped for many years. And when I was almost 40, I think it happened to all of us when you're 40, <laughs> you're back to your roots. <laughs> and I went back to Aikido. Aikido is a, it's a Japanese martial art. I practice Aikido. I'm teaching Aikido for kids every, every Saturday. <laughs> and I'm running. I'm swimming. I'm also dancing. <laughs> What else? And I have a daughter. <laughs> How can you pack that into, we don't want to say one day, maybe one week. How can you pack everything into your life? I think I have organizations. I have a very structured agenda. I try to squeeze the activity as much as I can. And what I do is I plan it on my agenda. Therefore, I have no excuse to say I'm not going for run because it's it's raining outside or it's cold. No, it's planned. And I know, okay, that's part of the day routine. The same for the Aikido, the training is, I have a regular set of training. Therefore, I know my Aikido training is usually on Monday and I have the class on Saturday. Then that's how I manage. <laughs> that's exactly the key to when you have so many interests, you have to plan it out. I took once a yoga class and the lady said, discipline means you have more freedom. It's actually true. When I've been training for a marathon, I follow the plan. The rest of my life is also more organized. That's true. And I, in my career, I live in Germany. I did my PhD in Germany. And that's what I learned from <laughs> the German. You have a Swiss roots. You can understand yeah, what yeah. I, But it's really... Coming from the Caribbean, coming from the French Latin culture, I was not used to this organizations and discipline. And really what I learned in Germany is this. And it helped me a lot because also it make it gives me peace in mind when I have this discipline because I know what will be my day. I know what will be my week. And then you can focus on something else. I think this discipline is very important, at least for me. But I'm wondering, they always say, add some unknown into the week. Do you have space for that then? Or you're, you're so strict, you're like, sorry, I got to go or... No, 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 no. I give some rooms, of course. Okay. Like usually Friday night, I will either go out 
or just stay at home, lay on the couch, everybody. <laughs> Most of the people will do on Saturday also. And usually a Sunday morning, I have Pilates class, but later the, during that day, I also have free, free time. No, I have free time. <laughs> okay, we just want to make sure. And now we're starting 2023. Is there anything special that you plan or you do Aikido, running, swimming, Pilates or anything else? I don't have a ch new challenges for my activities. I would like to do some race, of course. That's for the running part. For the Aikido, nothing. I would just continue my learning process. It's more or less on the, not really professional, but I'm also doing some mentoring activities. I'm part of a program called the Talentueuse. It's a program supporting women from the French Caribbean hmm. who are trying to enter the entrepreneurship. And I'm one of the mentor and I will support this program through the year. I'm also planning to go back to Guadeloupe. I want to start a coffee plantation and I'm now focusing on this project. I would now try to find the land, acquire the land and start to plant some uh, some coffee. That's mm -hmm. the goal for 23. It's a big goal. And that's how we met in Brussels when I gave a talk on lipstick leadership and we also were talking about appreciative inquiry where you create a dream when you introduce yourself. I felt your story is so inspirational that you have a dream, but at the moment, it's not a dream anymore. You are no. closer to reality. 20 so years that I have this dream and oh. I grow, I mean, it grows, of course, depending where you are in your career. I had, I studied long because I'm a doctor and I studied for more than 10 years. Then I still have this next 10 years when I had to develop my professional career and I had a kid. And that time, you don't really think about your dream because you focus to generate money, to grow up in your mm -hmm. career. But now she's doing well in school. I'm also set in my career. And now I can think about my project, which was always in my heart for these 20 years. When um, can we go to Guadeloupe and meet up with you? <laughs> Actually, it's a dream that I have because my parents had a little plantations. We had a house with some land. And when I was a kid, I will help my grandparents in this to collect the coffee. You have a process to remove the cherry and to collect mm -hmm. uh, the seeds and dry it and all of this. And I always wanted, I felt in that moment, a lot of peace. And that's, I think, what I'm looking for is mm -hmm. go back to this peaceful moment, a moment for myself. And but it takes a lot of patience, like growing this project, because when you plant your coffee, before you collect the first beans, you are waiting for two years. And then another three years before you really have a, a proper production, then I hope by in five years from now, maybe I will be invited to share with the people how I accomplished this project. We can always have in between. How is it going on the land? How yes, that would be that would be great. And so, my, my project is uh, because I'm an ecologist. I also study ecology. I want to restructure the coffee, not only focusing on the coffee itself, but just the uh, entire environment around it. And I plan to grow some cacao because cacao protect the coffee and avoid to have too much herbs growing under the under the coffee trees. And I would like to do vanilla because vanilla grows very well. And I have envisioned all of this agriculture and ecological environment around the coffee, the coffee being my main productions, but I will produce more than that. I want to see this. I will invite you. <laughs> okay. We keep yeah, I like to share and I will be very happy. And I think that's exactly what people want to see. Now you're in Belgium, then you go to Guadeloupe, which is already oh, something interesting. And then how do you do step by step? To uh, Right now, what I'm doing is I'm traveling very often. I try to make contact and that was because unfortunately my parents passed away and I have no land, nothing left there. Uh, I have some family friends and I'm going there very often and I'm trying to reconnect with people. And mm -hmm. because in Guadeloupe, more than anywhere else, is the network who play a big role. And this is something I learned abroad. I learned being in Harvard is what Harvard teach me is really what is a network. People in the U.S. really understand what, like Germany teach me the discipline, but U.S. Mm -hmm. the networking. And I'm very good at this. I'm very good at 
speaking up to people, sharing my, what I'm doing today, sharing my project to get the contact and mm-hmm. to really make progress doing the same in Guadeloupe, more, mm-hmm. more, even more important. We forget how much the relationship is important, especially when you yes. start a business, you need to have the right people on the right seat in the bus. And we see time and time again that you add people and they're like, ah, oh, that's not the right one. It's very important. And I like what you say in Germany, you learned that more the strategy and the discipline. This is, it's the planning. We usually put planning and execution in one bucket. It's so important to plan well. That's the German side. And then the execution is maybe more the American side on selling your passion and and come and join me on this journey. People go to Harvard for the network. We know that. That's true. (laughs) Why not? Yes. (laughs) Why not? And the vanilla and the cocoa that will be just added they cannot, it's a very similar proceed, mm-hmm. process of, of indeed how you harvest them is, is different. The vanilla, the vanilla, for example, needs trees and the coffee kind of needs a little bit of shadow. Then you use the tree around it to grow the vanilla because the vanilla grow on trees. Then all of this is very linked and it's how in the Caribbean and also I haven't been to Africa to see how I do it or in another country, but in Guadeloupe, this is how Ancestrally, we grow such a culture. People grow them together because they're interdependent. They need each other. This is the traditional culture we have there. It's a little bit back to the roots, but back to the how people were, were doing this type of culture. I'm not inventing anything. I'm just using what the ancestors were doing. Of course, I will improve the system because I have modern knowledge. But the basic, the, the, the really, <laughs> the ground is there actually. Mm-hmm. And I'm not going to invent anything. I will really follow their model. You can take the best from the old world and from the new world and combine it. And yes. people are more conscientious of what they're buying, who they're buying it for. It's fair trade. It's women owned and all that yes. good stuff. I think you're set up for success. How can we help you? What is your ask <laughs> from us? <laughs> I'm more want to exchange because growing coffee in your family is something else than growing coffee to be sustainable and to support you yourself for living. And uh, that's the part now I'm missing is really to know how you do it as a bigger scale. Is it what I learned sufficient? Is my idea sufficient? How can I improve the productivity? And also what I'm so, the piece I'm still now struggling with is how to sell it in the way I want, in a fair trade approach. And I'm also, because something also I learned is how to do business. And mm-hmm. now I'm still trying to identify who are the main people, actor in the system. I'm there yet. I'm learning step by step. I'm 20 years project. You're not going to do it <laughs> tomorrow. You need also to be patient. <laughs> it's one step at a time with, with the running. Yes. But I envision it's it's starting a business, you have an idea, and then you realize who will be my target audience, where do I have to market, where do I ship it, and then the, on the ground, I need people to help me, and it's a big undertaking. Something also I learned is, and something I was not thinking about is, I need to know how to roaster the coffee, because... It was very interesting. First, I was thinking, oh, you will grow this coffee, cacao, whatever, and you will sell it. And then case closed. Mm-hmm. The, my goal was to sell the coffee, the green beans. But I realized to sell them, you need to test them and to test the coffee. <laughs> you need to roast the coffee. And I kind of revised my project. And now in Belgium, I'm also learning how to do this because mm-hmm. You need to be able to sell your product to also Mm -hmm. know your strengths and to know that for coffee, (laughs) there is no other way. How much coffee do you drink these days? I'm a coffee fan. You can imagine. I usually test different types. Right now in my kitchen, I have uh, four types of coffee, a blend, Robusta and Arabica, a Brazilian one, a Colombian one, and um, one from Nicaragua. My favorite one are the one from South America. Yeah. <laughs> it's just when I see you or I imagine you're in Guadalupe, I see this vast field of you, happy, 
And there is also a little coffee place where people can gather and drink and laugh and tell stories. Is that the right way to envision this? <laughs> <laughs> and then you may have the chance also to do a tour to see how the, how the plantation works. Mm -hmm. I feel I'm very happy because I've been abroad now. I left Guadeloupe when I was 17 and I've been abroad for now almost almost 30 years. I learn from different cultures. I also speak mm -hmm. several languages. And now it's a pleasure for me really to share. Mm -hmm. When I was a kid, Guadeloupe was only a touristic place for people from France. But now it became international locations for mm -hmm. vacation. And mm -hmm. I think I can use my knowledge and what I learned abroad to really share my passions for coffee with other people. That's the goal. And then I will invite you for a cup of coffee. <laughs> well, come for a cup of coffee. I think like a lot of people take now vacations and they want to experience something. So you might even get some volunteers or uh, if you talk about the modern way of ecosystem fair trade. So I think there is so much that you probably will learn along the way. When you say you're so structured, I'm more, let's see, let's see at the possibilities. Let's leave some room for miracles or whatever comes your way. I learned around this journey because it's a journey to create mm -hmm, a company, mm -hmm. to create a project. It's to leave a room for be surprised. Indeed, even now, because I'm looking for land and I had to, because my family was not in the coffee as such. This was a, something they were doing on site. And now I had to really meet coffee producer in Guadeloupe and then knock on doors and push myself and a little bit go and, and, and sell the project. And I meet very nice people. So far, it, it was a pleasure. Then open the coffee plantation for people to visit and, and, and still be open for this kind of meeting. I think it's very important. Okay. Well, check in with you. I don't know when. We need to keep you accountable here. Say five years from now. <laughs> I don't know if I still have a podcast, but we can, we can still stay in contact. I wish you have. Thank you so much. We'll keep going for the next five years. So good luck and we'll check in with you. Thank you so much for explaining all the good stuff. Thank you. Let's have coffee in Guadeloupe. I can't wait. I cannot wait for five years. So let's hope it goes a little faster. Take it from the Iron Woman. We have episodes every Monday with interesting people, inspiring people. What are you taking away? And Take It From The Iron Woman is also the book, Global Business Coaching with Sports Parallels. Download it or get it in your local bookstore. Support local business. Thank you so much and bye-bye.